Hello and welcome to today's video. This is going to be a discussion about using JSON objects in Android Studio. And this is correlated with using OK HTTP V3 requests. So V3 means from the third version of OK HTTP library. And if you have seen the previous video, because this is the second in, the, in a short series, then you have seen how we created the application. Let me just go to the next screen. So in the previous video, we created an application that sends a request and receives a JSON from a server and displays that JSON. In this application, what we've done, we added this stream button. And when you press this stream button, the information received in the JSON is rearranged in a more user-friendly way, more readable way, if you want to call it as such. And for this, we use JSON objects. So we take this string, we pass it into a JSON object, and then we play it using that. So this is what we'll do today. Uh, I will first present a bit the application that we already have for those viewers who have not seen the previous video. I explain a bit of the code behind it, and then I add this button and explain the code for trimming the data. And of course, we try the application to see how it runs. With this in mind, let's go to Android Studio and see how it's done. Just like before, you will open Android Studio, only this time, instead of having an empty project or an empty activity project built, you will have this application, which we have constructed in the previous video. If you have not seen the previous video and uh, you don't know, or you don't have this application, you don't know how to build it, then I will go quickly through it and I will explain how to send a request to the server and how to get back a JSON. And then I will proceed by explaining how to work with that JSON in Android Studio. But for now, let me just go through the main aspects of this application so we're on the same page and then we can proceed together. Before anything else, what I suggest is just to open your project folder and under app, manifest, Android manifest file, make sure you open this file and look at this permission. You should have the user permission, Android permission, internet. Because if you don't have this, then your application will not be able to connect to the internet and you will not be able to get the information from the server. So this is the first thing, make sure you have this permission. Otherwise your application will keep crashing and you might not know why. So this is about Android manifest permissions. Then you also have to go to Grader scripts. And over here where it says build Grader module, you open this and in the lower part, where it says dependencies, see this line of code saying, okay, HTTP 4.10.0. This is the latest version of the uh, okay HTTP library. And you have to add this as a dependency. This is from okay HTTP 3 version. So make sure this is included. Otherwise, again, you will not be able to work with the okay HTTP client and so on. Okay, so after the manifest end, the dependencies, we can close these files. We can go back to our app. And this is what we have so far. The user interface has only two controls. It has a text view and this text view has an ID called text view received data and then some information displayed now. When we actually receive the JSON from the server, this is where we will display the information contained there. And speaking of JSONs, let me just show you what I mean by that. Uh, I'm sure some of you know, probably some of you don't know. This is a JSON, an example, and this is a standardized way of representing the information. And uh, it is, as you can see, a text-based file. And commonly it is used to send information from a server to clients, and even though it is quite easy, easily read by humans, because you can see it has an ID over here, then you have a first name, student, then it has a last name over here, then it has an avatar, and you can tell this is a link to an image. So you can read it. It's not very user friendly. There are a lot of uh, dots and a lot of commas and uh, uh, parentheses and so on. And when you receive this string from the server, you can display it as such. And this is what the application does right now. However, you want to display it in a more user-friendly way. Let's say you can only say ID, whatever it is, name, whatever it is, 
uh, last name, again, whatever it is. So we'll just perform the necessary modifications on this string and we'll use a uh, JSON object for that. And then we will display it. Okay, so now that you know about the JSONs, let's go back to our app. And as you have seen, when I press this button, I will get this string from the server. And I need another button. When I press that one, we will perform some customization so we present information nicer. Okay, this button. It is placed inside a constraint layout. This is why we have to set some constraints. First, I will set some horizontal constraints for the new button, then some vertical constraints. One should be enough. Then I will give it a bit of distance between the new button and the button above, so they, they are not uh, very close to each other. I will change the ID of the button. I will call it btn trim data. You always have to refactor when you change the ID. Then you go for this attribute text and the text displayed in the button will be trim data. Also, you can tell it is very hard to read because it's a small button. So you can search for the size attribute and then increase the text size to 20. I guess this should be enough. Okay, it's easier to read. And let's not forget the onClick method. So searching for the onClick attribute, you find this part over here. You can just click and give it a name. I'll say onClick trim data and hit enter. What I've actually done right now, I indicated the name of the method that I want to be executed when I press the button. As you can see, I have this red exclamation mark because there is no method with this name in the main activity Java file. Don't worry, we will just uh, write it in a moment. But for now, we prepared everything that we need for this new button. We can save, trim data. You know what? Let's just put a space between. Okay, saving again. I can go in the main activity Java file. Let me explain first what we have and then what we'll add. We start by having this main activity uh, class, obviously. Then you have the text view. This is the one that we will associate with the control in our user interface. Then we have a string URL. And this string, this is the address of our server that will send us the JSON when we request it with the information about that user. I have here another string, and this is an alternative. If this one is not online or doesn't work, you can select the second one. Or matter of fact, you can select any address of any server, uh, any, any place online that will provide you with a JSON that you can work with. So this is just for practicing. I don't know if they will be online by the time you will test this application or see this video, but for now, they're working both of them. And uh, I will just work with the first one in this example. Now we go to the onCreate method. And this is only for finding or associating the text view variable with the control in the user interface. Then I have this method on click get data. This is executed when we press the get data button. This button. So what actually happens? We have a new client, a new OK HTTP client being created. We have a new request being created with request builder. And this is where the address of the server is passed. The URL, this is, you can see our string above. And then we just say build, very simple, straight to the point. And then we have a new call and this new call uh, receives this request as an argument, the one above with the address of the server. And the interesting part about uh, this call and queue or whatever you pronounce it, is that check my previous video. When you write this line of code and you create a new callback, these two methods are generated automatically and they actually uh, run in a separate thread, in a worker thread, because as you know, or as you might need to know, you cannot run network related operations on the main thread or on the user interface thread. So this is why you used to, uh, uh, to code with async task, but this is deprecated now, or you used to create a 
uh, dedicated thread, worker thread. However, in this case, you don't need to do that. It is automatically created for you. And you have two instances uh, on failure when you don't get to receive the information that you need, in which case I display a toast message to the user in the context of this main activity. And I say that something went, went wrong and I select a length of time and I show the toast. But when I receive the information that I need, uh, this is here in the response body. Then from the response body, I take the string and I put it in a new received data string. And this string, I will just post in the text view on the user interface so that the user can see it. Okay, you might notice this run on user interface thread, new runnable. This is an approach that we use because keep in mind, we executed these lines of code. So when we execute these parts above here, we are, we are in a worker thread. And this text view, the text view show data, this is in the user interface, in the main thread. So we cannot modify its content from the worker thread. This is why the command to set the text, to modify the text of this text view has to be executed on the main thread. There are different ways to go about it. You can use the post method, you can use a handler, the shortest amount of code to write is run on user interface and that's it. So this is what we do until this point. What we have to do next, this is for the get data BTN. And just for you to understand better, this is from the main activity. Now we have to write the method that is executed when we press the trim data button. And this looks something like this. Public void on click. And I say trim data. And we pass a view over here. And we have the brackets. Next, we have to take the information from the, from the text view. So we say text view. Actually, we say string. String receive data. This will equal to text view show data. And from this text view, we get the text. And we move it to string. Now think of it, we should only do this if there is something. What if there is no information displayed in the text view? So I will say if text view show data, this one get text, this is different from null, only then we will execute whatever we need executing. And else, if there is nothing there, we will just display a toast to the user. And for me to make it simple, let me just copy this toast message over here. So I'm not going to type so much. So we're going to say a toast uh, saying that this will say press. Get URL data first. And we display to the user in this way. If we don't have valid data to display, we tell the user to press the button and get the data, the JSON. Okay, we saved this so far. Next thing, suppose we have the correct data, we get it into this string. And then we have to create a new JSON object and we say, JSON object, we call it just JSON, and this will be equal to a new JSON object. And we pass the string that we have just obtained. As you can see, there is this red underlining here. If I press on it, I have this light bulb. I can click and say, surround with try catch. I do just that. and inside the try part over here, I will work with this object. So brace yourself, this is going to be a bit long and nerdy, but what we have to do is as such, we set the text view to show data. This is our text view, and we'll set the text inside it as follows. 
let me look again at the file, how the information will receive. Okay, we have data and then we have ID and we have first name and last name. Okay. So in this case, because we need to take into account the structure of the information that we receive. So we will say first time, the first thing we have to display is the ID. And for this ID, we will just take the information from JSON dot get JSON object and we'll get data from the data and then we'll get the string get string and the string we need is called id id okay after we finish this we put some brackets and then we pass it a new line okay Actually, don't forget to add a plus here. Okay, a new line. And we have to repeat this. Okay, a bit of cosmetization over here. And one over here. Okay, let's go again over this part and understand again what we do. So first we type ID because we want to write ID. Then we take from the JSON object, from the data JSON object, we get the string that is named ID. Then we add a new line. So we move to the lower line. Then we add, and this is when I, I avoided to have a long, long line of code. So I put here lower and maybe I will put them side by side so you understand it even better. So then we move to the next part and the next part is first name. And it's like this first name. So we will write on the screen first name. This will be for the uh, person data. And inside here, we pass the string that we want to the information from. It's called first name. Okay, then we add a new line and we will add the last name, last name and then for the last name, we take from the data JSON object, we take the string that it's called. Let me have a look. The string it's called last name. This will hold the information here, the last name of the student or person or whatever that is in our JSON. And this should be enough. I don't add the image from the link because I don't know if the link is functional or not for the image, but this is what we have. And let's just come back here. I can save the code. I think this should be working. Let's try it out. Okay, the application has loaded. I will zoom in a bit. So you have the text view with no information yet. If I press the get URL data, this is when I get all this JSON information with the data and the ID. And you, you can see here, you have the string ID, the string first name, the string last name, and then you have the content over there. So when I press the trim button, I should have everything displayed nicer. And as you can see, now I have the ID, the student name and the last name, okay, first and last name. So I can either present the information in this way as I receive it from the server, or I can trim it and present it in a more user-friendly way. So I hope you have learned something new today. I hope this is helpful for you. If you have questions, suggestions, anything to share with myself or with the community, leave a comment in the comment section below. If you need to find out more information about Android and uh, how to work with different aspects, of building mobile apps, then you can check the description of this video and you will find a lot of links to very useful videos. And until we meet in the next video, keep practicing, keep learning and take care. See you next time.